we need to focus on the short-term issues, uh, which is the resolving the trade dispute, because there will be a long list of things that America will demand of China, even after the trade tensions and trade disputes. There will be technology, there will be Southeast Asia Sea, and there will be a range of issues. But right now, so long as we're focusing the discourse on trade, um, trying to find a middle ground, this is actually good for China. China is happy to buy more time to undergo the reforms, make the economy stronger. It wants to stay focused on the trade issues. Mm. Um, where does Huawei fit into the, the broader story then? Because I understand uh, the ongoing trade tit for tat and we'll, we'll just see where that one goes. But mm -hmm. this issue around Huawei, it seems to me, has legs because we, we just had uh, the former Australian trade minister sitting here. He said Australia has taken action on ruling Huawei out of its 5G development for good security reasons. The West then surely has quite a lot to fear from Huawei and Chinese tech. Uh, this is the perception, but ultimately it is down to the individual countries to choose. What um, uh, Number one, Huawei is going to be fine just because it's going to operate in domestic uh, economy and that's massive and that's enough for Huawei to thrive. But we are seeing some Eastern countries actually defying the demands of, uh, of the U.S. and saying, look, this is better technology. It's cheaper. It's 20 years ahead. If we don't adopt it, that's, you know, that, that comes, we're falling victim to that. There is, uh, of course, an inevitability about um, China ultimately becoming the world's largest uh, superpower at some point. Um, if we look at the relationship with the United States through that prism and the comments that you've made about trade in the near term, what then are the next key strategic disputes that we're going to see? I think that uh, technology is certainly going to be uh, one of the focal points, especially when there's competition. I do believe that there will be geopolitical uh, tensions rising uh, in the regions that we've spoken about. I think that China is going to, uh, that you know, the influence of the U.S. in Asia is going to be a focal point, and how China is going to become the leader of the region shall be presidency as well as China's objective. What about the areas of common ground? Let's, let's, uh, on, a, on a more positive note, I mean, the symbiosis between the U.S. and the investment. Uh, has been amazing. The, the, you know, the first or second largest investor in U.S. Treasuries, for instance, as well. Do you expect that to continue, or do you think actually that's going to become another victim uh, of, of what we're seeing on the trade war at the moment? Actually, the trade flows into bond markets, into the dollar. Uh, those are going to diminish somewhat. Truculent U.S. policies don't serve their purposes. And in fact, it's very sad because these countries just don't trade the same things. It's not a competition uh, like the, you know, the likes between the UK and the US. Mm. They are producing different things. China invests a lot in the US. Now we're seeing a dramatic slowdown, so it's directing more towards Europe, good for Europe. Um, but uh, in terms of selling bonds, I think that because the Chinese financial system is still weak, this will hurt China uh, quite a bit. Mm. And so uh, in order to prevent disruptions in financial markets, I think that's a no-go.